So today we are going to talk about a very interesting and very important subject matter that uh, is repeatedly and very often quoted in from the Bhagavad Gita. One of the most often quoted verses is uh, Sarvadharma Paritija. So we'll do, do that verse, okay? Yeah, and also uh, please note that uh, I have a little bit of time restriction. So right about two o'clock or maximum two or five or something, then I have to leave. So I'm just gonna to try to move a little bit fast, but I will try not to be too quick, okay? Um, so I'm gonna share my screen now. Yeah. Okay. So, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Om so Bhagavad Gita as it is, 1866. Sarva dharman parityajya mame kam sharanam braja aham tvam sarva pape bhyo mokshayshyami ma shucha. So abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. The purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. The Lord had described various kinds of knowledge and process of religion. Knowledge of the Supreme Brahman, knowledge of the Super Soul, knowledge of different types of orders and status of social life, knowledge of renounced order of life, knowledge of non-attachment, sense and mind control, meditation, etc. He has described in so many ways different types of religion. What is the use of the different types of religion here? These are the different types of religion, not you know Sikhism, Jainism, Christianity. That's not religion. This is really different dharma that he's talking about. Okay. Now, in summarizing Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says that Arjuna should give up all the processes that have been explained to him. He should simply surrender to Krishna. That surrender will save him from all kinds of sinful reactions, for the Lord personally promises to protect him. One should unhesitatingly accept Krishna as the supreme savior of all living entities. With faith and love, one should surrender unto him. The process of surrender to Krishna is described in the Hari Bhakti Vilas. Anukulyasya sankalpa pratikulyasya vajanam rakshishyati ti vishwa so gokritve varanam datha atmanikshepa karpanye shadvidha Sharanagati. So notice Srila Prabhupada puts this reference in the purport to this verse about surrender. This is the definition of surrender. Okay, this is the key that helps understand what surrender means in practical terms that we can take home today. This verse is the key. According to the devotional process, one should simply accept such religious principles that will lead ultimately to the devotional service of the Lord. That's the first part. Accept those things that will take us to Krishna consciousness, to devotional service. Anything that does not lead to the perfectional stage of Krishna consciousness should be avoided. That's the second point. You know, this is the translation of that verse. Okay. First is take up principles that will take you to Krishna Bhakti. Second, reject or avoid those things that do not lead to Krishna consciousness. Third point, one should be confident that in all circumstances, Krishna will protect him from all difficulties. Three, there's no need to think of how one should keep the body and soul together. Krishna will maintain us. Four, one should always think himself helpless and humble. Five, and should consider Krishna the only basis for his progress in life. Krishna is everything. That's six. Okay, Six points are there. So six points are made in that. As soon as one seriously engages himself in devotional service to the Lord in full Krishna consciousness, at once he becomes freed from all contamination of material nature. There are different processes of religion and purificatory processes by cultivation of knowledge. 
meditation, in the mystic yoga, etc. But one who surrenders unto Krishna does not have to execute so many methods. That simple surrender unto Krishna will save him from unnecessarily wasting time. One can thus make all progress at once and be freed from all sinful reactions. <laughs> one should be attracted by the beautiful vision of Krishna. His name is Krishna because he's all attractive. One becomes attracted by the beautiful, all-powerful, omnipotent vision of Krishna is fortunate. There are different kinds of transcendentalists. Some of them are attached to the impersonal Brahman vision. Some of them are attracted by the super soul feature, etc. But one who is attracted to the personal feature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and above all, one who is attracted by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as Krishna himself is the most perfect transcendentalist. In other words, devotional service to Krishna in full consciousness is the most confidential part of knowledge. And this is the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. I'll read this sentence again because if somebody in the middle of the street asks you, okay, this book you're showing me Bhagavad Gita, what is the essence of this book in one sentence? This is the sentence. <laughs> So you turn to this sentence, memorize it. Someone asks you, what is the essence? Don't scratch your head. You should know this sentence. What is the essence of Bhagavad Gita? Devotional service to Krishna in full consciousness is the most confidential part of all knowledge. I will share this slide with you, Mataji. And you can distribute to everyone. And this is the essence of the whole Bhagavad Gita. This is now, I, it looks nice because I put it in the form over here, but this is in Prabhupada's purport. I'm not writing this or composing this. Prabhupada has given all these gems and set them beautifully on this crown called Bhagavad Gita. You just have to know the gems. Hmm? So that is the end of the purport. So I think you already did uh, Mangala Charan, so I'll skip that. Nothing wrong with my slides. Yeah. See something just wrong with my slides. One second. It didn't go further down. Hey, it's, this mouse is not working properly. So no, my computer was too stuck. Okay, I'll just come over here. Should I bring more battery? No, no, it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to share this one. Uh, can you see the PowerPoint? Kritika Mataji, you can see it now, right? Yeah, okay. Okay, good. So, you can see the slides here, that's fine. I'm just gonna expand this a little bit more over here. So abandon all varieties of religion and surrender unto me. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions, do not fear. So this is the question, right? A lot of people may ask, when you say surrender, People may not even ask it. They may, make, they may assume they know what it already means. That's another problem. Sometimes you read something, yeah, yeah, I'll surrender to God. But in the mind, their definition of surrender will differ from the proper definition of surrender. So it's important for us to, first of all, understand, not make an assumption of what surrender means. Let us understand from the acharyas, from the pure devotees, and from the scriptures, what surrender means. Surrender has six components, right? Those six components are described in that uh, verse from Hari Bhakti Vilas. So, Dainya Atma Nivedana, this is a bhajan by Bhaktivinoda Thakur. You know, Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a great grand spiritual master. And he sings, Dainya Atma Nivedana Gopritveparana. Like that, he sings this beautiful song. Avashya Rakhi Ve Krishna Vishwasa Palan. Bhakti Anukula Matra Karyera Svikar 
Brakti Pratikula Bhava Varjan Angikar, which means that anything that is anukula, that is conducive, that is favorable for increasing my consciousness of Krishna, increasing my love, my remembrance, my ap ap appreciation for Krishna, that I must accept into my life. Karyera Svikar, accept it into my life. And Matra, only that should I accept. Bhakti Pratikula Bhava Varjanangikar. And anything that is opposing bhakti or does not contribute to my development of Krishna consciousness, I must thoroughly reject and avoid it. These two are the first components. Dainya Atma Nivedana. Dainya is humility. Be humble. Humility is a big part of uh, surrender. The mood or attitude has to be that of humility. Not that I'm so great, I'm so great. Sometimes, uh, we are so proud of ourselves, we think we are also good at being humble. It's true. It's like, you know, it's so hard to be humble when you're so great like me. But somehow I manage, I'm managing. You know? <laughs> so some people will think like that. Yeah. It's hard to be humble when you're great, but I manage also. It's okay. So this is another illusion that we have. We don't understand what it means to be humble. Uh, dainya. Okay. So Dainya means humility. Atma Nivedana means dedication of self. That means this uh, idea that my existence is only for you, Krishna. My whole existence is only for you. For your pleasure, for your purposes, for your service. To further your interest. I don't want to be a ritualistic person. I don't want ritual to drive my life. I want to be spiritual. You see, there's a difference between ritual and spiritual. What is the difference? SPI. Supreme Personality and His Interest. What is His Interest? So the interest of the Supreme Personality, when you add it to ritual, it becomes spiritual. You should never ever do anything for Krishna in a ritualistic manner. Ritualistic means, you know, superficial, mechanistic, mechanical. No, no. When we offer our head to the Lord, don't do it ritualistically. We should do it with our heart. My Lord, I am yours. That feeling must come when we touch the head to the floor. When we offer the arati to the Lord, it should be with so much feeling that, my Lord, there should be nothing evil befall you. Nothing bad should happen to you. It's like, you know, Nazar Utarna, we have in our Indian culture, that we take the removal of the evil eye. We do out of love. Mothers do it to the children. You know, they put their hand over the head if, you know, to, to make sure others' uh, evil eye doesn't affect. It's out of love. So when you offer arati, the mood is like that. You know, that my Lord, nothing bad should happen to you. Anything that bad is supposed to happen to you should come to me. May you always smile nicely. Now, of course, nothing bad can happen to the Lord. He's the Lord. <laughs> but still, the point is the love. Mother Yashoda thinks that if I don't feed Krishna today, he'll die of starvation tomorrow. Why? He's the Supreme Lord. But that's not the point. The point is that your interest is the most important. Dedication of self. Goptritva Varana. Accepting the Lord as one's only maintainer. There is a nice story of Goptritva Varana. I'll tell you. There was one, one boy, young man. His name was Brian Tibbetts. Brian Tibbetts, American young man, and he had uh, just come from here. This is back in the time of Vietnam War, you know, in the 70s. And he had just come back from Vietnam War fighting. He, just, he was still like not even 20 years old, and he had seen so much pain and suffering. And uh, he was really sad. So one day he went out. He was praying, God, give me a sign. You know, I need some sign. What am I supposed to do in life? And uh, so he, went, he just randomly walked into a museum. And in the museum, he saw a picture of one blue boy and he was dancing and some girls were dancing around him. So he asked the security guard, what is this picture? The security guard, he said, I don't know much about it. This is, uh, you know, uh, African-American guy. And he said, I don't know much about it, but it looks like Oh, I don't know. It looks like uh, it said that's a Krishna. And Krishna is the God. And that's his, uh, you see, this, the sign says the milkmaids. 
in uh, Vrindavan. So it looks like God is having a good time with his milkmaids in Vrindavan, having a dance party. <laughs> That's all I know. That's what it looks like to me. So then this uh, boy, Brian, was fascinated. Wow, God can actually be like this and dance in blue color? A young boy like that? I've never seen God depicted as a young boy. So he was quite fascinated by it. So then he walked out. And what does he see outside? A bunch of Hare Krishnas chanting, Hare Krishna. Hey, what? Is, that sounds just like the Krishna that I just saw in the museum. So he walks up to this uh, one uh, sannyasi, a young uh, American sannyasi. And he's saying, uh, what are you guys singing? He's saying, we're singing Krishna, the name of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of God. It is all attractive. And uh, he, you know, when we sing his name, then we can come into contact directly with Krishna. Krishna, is that the same Krishna who has dances with the milkmaids in Vrindavan? So yeah, 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 you know about Krishna. Yeah, well, in, in the museum, there's a picture, uh, like, a, you know, a museum of Indian art. And I saw the same name and I figured you guys are thinking, singing the same thing. So I thought, you know, what's going on over here? So I thought I'll ask you. I said, yes, those milkmaids are called gopis. And those are his, Krishna's internal energy. They're not ordinary spirits. So they're not ordinary people like us. These are the Lord's pastimes. So then this boy, Brian, was very fascinated. He said, tell me more. So then I explained more about Krishna consciousness. Then Brian said, well, you guys do all this all day long, just standing out of Krishna like this. What do you, how do you eat? He said, no, Krishna provides everything. What about uh, where you stay and all that? You need some money, right? He said, no, whatever we need, Krishna provides. How does that work? Brian asked. Then uh, this devotee told him, he said, Gopritve Varana. This line from the surrender. Now, what does that mean, Gopritve Varana? Which means, I'm confident that Krishna is going to maintain me. So then Brian looks at this uh, sannyasi's feet. Now they're outside in the hot sun and the sannyasi doesn't have shoes. He says, don't look like he's protecting you. I mean, how do you even go about, you guys don't even have shoes. How do you maintain yourselves? Then the sannyasi said, and the other devotees also, and he said, if Krishna thinks I need shoes, if he feels I need shoes, he will provide. I'm confident. That's called Goptrita Varana. We are just happy to be singing his name. If Krishna will give me shoes, I'll wear them. If not, it's okay. Not a big deal. I can't afford them. I'm just, all I can barely afford is clothes. We live in Hare Krishna center, you know, and there's prasadam and everything. You can come and eat, but it's okay. Right now, I can't afford shoes. Then um, Brian said, no, see, this system doesn't work for me. You can't just go out without shoes like that. And what kind of God is it that you have so much faith in him and he doesn't really give you anything? Just at that one moment, one kid comes out from post office with a box in his hand. And he opens the box and he's complaining. Size 10? My grandma sent me size 10 shoes. Oh my God, she doesn't know I'm size 13. And then he put his hand out. Anybody here want a pair of brand new shoes? He said like right in front of those devotees. And this sannyasi put his hand out here, I need them. <laughs> and the boy gave it to them and it fitted his shoes, his, his feet exactly because he was size 10. It was like a scene from Cinderella. You know Cinderella, yeah, that fitted the shoes. And Brian's head started spinning. And he, <laughs> while the sannyasi was tying the shoelace, he said, see, Krishna thinks I need shoes, he gave me shoes. <laughs> this is called Goptritva Varana, my friend. And this Brian was so blown away. He actually went ahead and just joined the devotees then and there. He was so impressed by Krishna's miracle in front of his eyes, this principle of Goptritva Varana. And Brian Tibbets went on to the temple. He never even went home after that. He just joined temple right then and there. That same Brian Tibbets grew up in the movement. Today, his name is Indra Dhyumna Swami. And he travels all over the world preaching. Hurry, boy. And that sannyasi was Vishnu Janaswami Swami who spoke to him. So if you want, we have actually done a drama of this one. If you can watch it, uh, Mother of My Son played the part of Brian Tibbetts. Uh, you know, so you can watch it. Uh, I have it on YouTube, you can watch it. I wrote the script and everything, but this is a true story. So Goptritva Varana, you see it's a real thing. And Avishya Rakhive Krishna, confidence that Krishna will surely protect me. These are the spiritual deep 
attitudes that we need to develop. It is not just a theoretical thought. This is something we want to meditate on and act on it. We have to transfer our insecurity to Krishna and convert it to confidence that Krishna will protect me. Even if something looks like he didn't protect me, but he did something ultimately to increase my Krishna consciousness because we're all going to die anyway. So protection from death is not really the protection. Protection of our Krishna conscious growth, protection of Krishna consciousness, our future, that is what is protecting. Bhakti Anukula Matras, we talked about that, only doing those things that help Krishna consciousness and rejecting those that. Yeah. So one example of Avashya Rakibe Krishna, confidence that Krishna will surely protect me. So you remember this, this is Devaki, mother of Krishna, and these are the demigods who are coming to pray to her when Krishna is in the womb. So Devaki prays, no one in this material world has become free from the four principles of birth, death, old age, and disease, even by escaping to various planets. But now that you have appeared, my Lord, death is fleeing in fear of you. And the living entities have obtained shelter at your lotus feet by your mercy and are sleeping in full mental peace. You see, when the Lord appears in our life, we can sleep very peacefully. When we hear Bhagavatam, the Lord appears in our life. Finally, we can sleep peacefully. This is why in Bhagavatam class, you'll see half the people are sleeping. <laughs> you see, because deep sleep, sweet sleep established as an irrevocable fact when you hear the Bhagavatam. Another example, so anyway, this is the verse that she spoke. Another example is Parikshit Maharaj. Parikshit Maharaj, you know, he was cursed to die. He was cursed to die in seven days. And he prays, Oh Brahmanas, just accept me as a completely surrendered soul and let Mother Ganges, the representative of the Lord, also accept me in that way, for I have already taken the lotus feet of the Lord into my heart. So you see, he's saying, I know death is coming, but I'm feeling confident. So think about this. He knows death is coming, but yet he's confident. Confident about what? That Krishna will take care of him for the next life. And death is sure for everybody. See? So where is his confidence coming from? From his Krishna conscious acceptance that the Lord's lotus feet are in my heart. Let the snake bird, you know, this Takshak Nag, or whatever magical thing the Brahman has created, bite me at once. I only desire that you all continue singing the deeds of Lord Vishnu. That's all I want. Just keep chanting, keep singing the glories of Krishna. So what is he protecting the Lord? He protects us from fear. Why? Because fear is the illusion. It's a sort of illusion and the Lord frees us from the illusion of fear. From fear, all kinds of tension, bodily problems, insecurities, friction with each other, friction with relatives, friction with friends, friction with other devotees. These insecurities are because of fear. And fear comes from what? Vithya abhiniveshita. In the 11th canto it says, Bhayam Vithya abhiniveshita syat that fear comes from identifying with matter. And then we feel insecure. I will lose this. I will lose my name. I will lose my position. I will lose my money. You know, these fears. But what Krishna protects us from? From fear. Fear of all kinds. That's what protection means. See? So Krishna is known as Bhakti Abhayankara. Abhayankara means he removes our fear. Bhaya means fear and abhaya means fearlessness. So, His Divine Grace, Abhaya Charanaravinda Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. Abhaya. Abhaya means what? Fearless. From the moment He was born, He was named Abhaya. Everything He did was infused with Krishna consciousness right from His childhood. He never has known fear in His life. Even as He's climbing onto the Jaladuta ship with His bag, Look at the fearlessness on his face. So much confidence. He's going to a country he's never been. He's never left India before. Traveling for the first time outside of India, age 70. No money, no support from any organization. He didn't even know if there will be food available over there. 
like vegetarian food. You know, in this bag, he had some books and small things. And he had half of this bag was filled with uh, cereal. He was prepared to live on the cereal for about two months supply of uh, cereal. He didn't know if there's going to be vegetarian food over there. So I'll live on boiled potatoes and this cereal. I'm willing to do that. I'll check it out. I'll try to serve Krishna over there. Imagine how much boldness it takes, how much fearlessness. But he was insistent. No, my Guru Maharaj has said, I need to speak to the English speaking world. I will go to the center of English speaking world, New York City, and I'll preach from there. This is called Abhaya. In fact, he was listed, Srila Prabhupada was listed among the top 10 people whose lives began after age of 60. He's listed. This is, I think, Time magazine, one of the very major magazines. He started at age of 72 and became hugely globally successful. He's recognized by the world. You know, this is called Abhaya. Krishna protects us from the fear. So the question may be asked, we are reading here that Krishna takes care of a fully surrendered soul, but I don't think I can surrender immediately, 100%. In my case, why should Krishna take care of me if I'm not 100% surrendered? So the point is that even if a devotee tries to surrender to Krishna, the Lord knows the struggle and he comes to the aid to the assistance, to the help of the devotee. Even if, even if we try, we show some attempt. Just like a child tries to walk and tries to get up for the first time and walk a little bit, the father comes and holds the finger, gives full support. How does he help? He gives inspiration, inspiration to the devotees via either spiritual master or other progressive devotees. And some baby steps of surrender are taught and gradually there is progress on the path. For example, you start chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Maybe you just chant three times Hare Krishna Maha Mantra per day, then you're done. Then we increase it to one whole round of Maha Mantra. It's wonderful. And then two rounds and so on. We keep increasing. Then we learn about how to increase the quality. We talked about Japa quality the last time. So that's how we can also gradually start surrendering. But see, Krishna, Krishna is very kind. Very kind person. He's not like a rough dictator or one who is counting our sins, you know, measuring every little, uh, you know, technicality of the law of the Vedas. No. He is eager for our progress. He wants us to succeed. He certainly helps us at every step. And he gives us inspiration in the heart and help and support through the devotees. Have you seen this? These are dolphins. I don't know if they still do this uh, show in Mombasa or anything in Malindi or something. But these dolphins, these are dolphins. They do it here in a place called SeaWorld. And uh, so how do they train these dolphins to jump over a stick like this? It's not easy to train them, but you know how they do. First, they put a rope under the water. And then they tell, okay, dolphin now come swim across. And then so the dolphin swims over the rope. If the dolphin swims over the rope, they give a treat. If they swim under the rope, they don't get a treat. So then the dolphin realizes, oh wait, I should keep swimming over the rope. Next step is to take the rope just at the surface of the water. So the dolphin already figures out he has to go over the rope. So the dolphin knows how to jump. So he'll jump just over the rope and you will get the treat. Eventually you train the dolphin long enough, you don't even need the rope. You just indicate with the hand and the dolphin just jump. So whenever we make some attempt to surrender. The Lord also trains us. He, he arranges for us to gradually increase our strength, our understanding, our knowledge, until it becomes second nature, until it becomes a habit. You see? And uh, doing the right thing becomes, you don't have to think about it anymore. You know? So whenever we make some attempt to surrender, the Lord rewards us in various ways. This is, this is a general principle everybody realizes when we come to Krishna consciousness. The Lord fills our heart with so much ecstasy. Wow, why am I feeling is so much happiness? I mean, I understand a little bit happiness, nice music, nice food, but the quality and the intensity of this happiness is different categorically. I've never felt this much relief in my life. There's something about this Krishna, you know? 
And so then he takes us to the next one. He rewards us. And as we go through one door, he opens the next door, the next door. And you think, ah, I thought I knew, but now after this, I know more of how the Lord is so great than the next door. Wow. I mean, I knew the Lord is great, but this great, I had no idea until it goes more and more and you can't even handle it. You see, so knowing that God is great is good, but how great is Lord? That only comes when we practice Krishna consciousness and it keeps going and going until we become more and more advanced. When Srila Prabhupada was practically in his last days on the bed, he was still translating. And this is one of the last verses that Prabhupada translated from Srimad Bhagavatam. And he said, one should understand that no one is independent. For everything is part and parcel of Krishna and is acting and moving by the supreme desire of Krishna. This understanding, this consciousness is Krishna consciousness. What is Krishna consciousness? Know that everything comes from Krishna. No one is independent of Krishna. and Everything moves by the desire of Krishna. Basically, Krishna is in full control of our lives. So to surrender to Krishna is not so difficult if we just understand that everything is under his control anyway. We just have to recognize. We are already somewhat surrendered. We are puppets. So all we have to do is recognize that we are controlled by him. If I, but you see, with my consciousness, if I surrender, then he will kindly guide me toward him. If I surrender to his material energy, the illusory energy, then she will guide me away. So surrender we must do. We don't realize that, but we either surrendering to uh, the dark side or to the Krishna conscious side, to matter or to spirit. No one is independent. We must choose to whom we surrender. Never think we are not surrendered. We always surrender to someone or the other. Our only thing is to surrender to the right person, the right place. And surrender to Krishna is not difficult. Usually the chains that tie us down, these chains of material attachment that tie us down, that prevent us from taking the next step in Krishna consciousness, they're usually in our mind, more mental than physical. This horse is not going anywhere. Even though this chair is so light, a horse will start running, it'll just fly. But horse is mentally thinking, I'm tied to this chair, I can't move. So sometimes we convince ourselves, I'm so much in Maya, I have so much mental attachments, so much material attachment, there's no scope for me. But it is as silly as this attack, this, this time, we're not that badly tied now. We just need to make some attempt and Krishna takes care for the next step and next step. So we can start surrendering today itself. It could be as simple as starting to bow down every morning to Krishna's picture. As simple as that, with our heart. It could be as simple as starting to chant one round daily of Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Mantra, most powerful method of Krishna consciousness. It could be as simple as increasing the number, increasing the quality. So let us ask ourselves, We ask ourselves, what step will I take starting today to become closer to Krishna? One thing, whatever it is, you know where you are. So I will do one thing today. You know, note it down. The thing, whatever it is, you can decide. Something that will bring, bring me closer to Krishna. From tomorrow or from today, I will read one page of Bhagavad Gita without fail. And I will try to understand it with all my intelligence. You know, I will read Srila Prabhupada's books. They're very clear. And I will understand. I will chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we can pray like this daily that, my dear Lord, I am your eternal servant. Somehow I have fallen into this ocean of suffering, but now I want to turn to you. Please allow me to progress toward your lotus feet and engage me in your service. Kindly bless me with your merciful glance and your beautiful lotus eyes. And that is the prayer that we can give to the Lord daily as we start chanting. 
he asked him to bless us with his karunya kataksh his merciful sidelong glance and we pray like that please infuse my life with your mercy because without your mercy my lord there is no question of progress without your mercy my lord i will not know how to surrender so please glance toward me i know i am most fallen i know i have made many mistakes very likely i'll make more mistakes but please keep me with you and give me the guidance the intelligence on how i can come closer to you starting today starting right now so then with that mood we chant the hare krishna maha mantra hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare and then we bow down with all the humility at our command and then we pray that the lord manifests himself in our heart and in our lives in our intelligence and in our mind in our activities in our thoughts and in our interaction with everybody else this is krishna consciousness so thank you very much for hearing this out this is just a brief synopsis of what sharanagati means what it means to surrender to krishna hare krishna in the first Mansi Ganga Mataji has a first comment. No comment. Question. Question. I I put my finger up because age before beauty. So <laughs> my. <laughs> so no, because I was reflecting that you started by saying this uh, six processes of surrender is in Hari Bhakti Vilas, right? Yes. Yes or no? Correct. It's that's from the that is quoted in the purport itself. Which purport of eighteen sixty six? Yeah, I believe so. Oh, okay. If you believe, then it's true. And so you brought out Bhakti Vinod Thakur as he does for Shishastikam and other things, right? Yeah. So it's because you know I was trying to talk to Benson and I said, "Hey Benson, I've forgotten from where is this process? I knew it's not from nectar of devotion instruction." Thank you. And bringing it to the Bhagavad Gita of 1866 is a real eye opener. Okay, Hari Bol now. Questions. I give it to them. The floor. Okay. Yeah. No, I just checked it. So it is. I mean, that is just copy pasted from the purport itself. In the purport that Hari Bhakti Vilas quote is there, uh, and then the purport translation of that quote is very beautifully done by Shri Prabhupada. You know, so I really encourage all the devotees to read that purport repeatedly because every sentence there requires a lot of processing, which is why we need to repeatedly. But if you go to that purport, maybe that's an exercise you can do next time. Repeat the purport and understand, and maybe everyone can share what they understand from that purport. Thank you. Okay, we have a question here. Kirtika Mataji has written: For neophytes, rituals are important as they will not have Krishna prem from day one. Correct. So rituals are important. However, when we learn the ritual, we should infuse it from day one with feeling. You know, that's the understanding. That the ritual is not the end goal in and of itself. it is the mechanism by which we express our love to the person that we want to show our love to therefore we should discourage the mechanistic uh, undertaking or practice of anything it should never be mechanistic you know this is bhakti yoga it is not it is a yoga of loving devotional service not mechanical uh, superficial service loving devotional service is key therefore even when we teach we should first teach the attitude and the mood and the motivation suppose i'm going to teach arti okay first you light the lamp you offer this many circles i am teaching but before i start teaching the arti i should first tell the devote the the students that the purpose of this arti is to show how much suppose i want to do arti to shila prabhupada to show how much we appreciate you shila prabhupada and show how much i love you shila prabhupada that any nothing evil should come upon you it should all come on me i'm taking it you know this is like a very intimate form of love arti is a mechanism to show intimate form of love not something that we can check off okay today's arti is done no 
it is a way to exchange love and serve Srila Prabhupada. That my dear Srila Prabhupada, I'm offering this uh, flower to you. This is for your pleasure. I'm offering this incense. This is for your pleasure. I hope you like it. And then Srila Prabhupada will offer it to the Lord. Like that, you know? So this is the mood. Nothing should be ritualistic. Uh, that's a good point. Sadhvi has a question. How do we know if we are surrendering or not? It's a very good question. Or uh, you may want to ask that, how, how do we know to what extent our surrendering is successful? How do we measure the success of the surrender? So there is a verse in the 11th canto uh, that defines or gives us the litmus test on how to know whether we have uh, made any progress in our surrender. Okay, it's called Bhakti Pareshanubhava Virakti. So when we perform Bhakti, then two things happen. Pareshanubhava and Virakti. We feel the presence of Krishna. We see the Supreme Lord. Well, I already see the Lord in the temple. He's there. Murti is there. What do you mean we see the Lord? No, no, we recognize the Lord. We learn to recognize that this deity form is Krishna himself. Anubhav, you experience. Paresh Anubhav. Paresh refers to the Lord. Paresh Anubhava. So that's one way to measure. We feel the presence of the Lord in our lives. And Virakti. Virakti means uh, we feel detached from things that were material that we used to be attached to. When we start losing taste for uh, materialistic pursuits, uh, entertainments, uh, materialistic engagements that are meant for sense gratification, and we increase the taste for Krishna consciousness, we don't need to be told to go to the temple. We don't need to be told to chant. We don't need to be pulled, you know, we don't need to be pushed to do something Krishna conscious. We are pulled by our own heart. I can't wait, you know, to open Bhagavad Gita today because there's so much taste there, so much, uh, so much sweetness there, you know. So, um, that is how you measure Paresh Anubhava Virakti. That you give up the taste for lower thing and you accept. And the analogy is given is that when we're eating a meal, suppose we're very hungry, haven't eaten for like a whole day, and then your very perfect meal is put in front of us of hot prasadam, and we start eating. So we don't, nobody needs to tell us that now, after the first two bites, you are feeling nourished, you are feeling satisfied. Automatically, nobody needs to tell us that, you'll feel it. You see, nobody needs to tell you. So when we eat, Several things happen. Our hunger dissipated, stomach gets filled, our body gets energized and nourished. Number of things are happening at the same time. And you don't feel hunger anymore. So the uh, measurement of bhakti and our, uh, uh, and our uh, process, practice, uh, will be its own experience. Sometimes someone can even recognize, other people recognize for sure. That that girl, she used to be so much into these other things and now she has no interest in watching movies. All she cares about is discussing Krishna as if it's like the new thing. And she doesn't stop. She doesn't stop about talking about Krishna. She doesn't stop about excitingly sharing Krishna consciousness with her friends. She doesn't uh, stop getting excited about upcoming festivals, Janmashmi and all that. She can't contain herself when she sees the beautiful flower decorations. And she just jumps and dances more than anybody else. People will see. And you will feel it. You will feel the smile. So, yeah. The, the, those are some of the ways. Paresh Anubhava Virakti. Kirtika Mataji asks. Yes, go ahead, Mataji. Sorry. Sadhvi Radha is the personification of a surrendered soul. I know her from a little kid to now. She's completely a surrendered soul. Everything you said is her description. She yeah. knows it. Nobody knows, but she knows it, and I know it. Thank you for sharing that. By the way, she's Rukman Prabhu's daughter-in-law. Oh, really? Oh, I know that. That's cool. 
And with a kid, but look, she's made a point of coming and attending your class. Very serious devotee. Yeah, maybe you should share the share your camera. So that'll be nice. Rukma Prabhu is one of my early mentors in Krishna consciousness. When I was uh, just starting out under Mansi Ganga Mataji, Rukma Prabhu, you know, I learned a lot of things. I used to bug them all day long. Tell me more about Krishna. Tell me. <laughs> and uh, now they are very uh, kind. Okay, so one more question. Yep. When we lose the taste for materialistic things, it becomes difficult for people around you as they would like you to be materialistic. Yes, certainly. Certainly. Um, if you want to know who a person is, you all you need to do is find out who his friends are. You see, that's how you tell. Association is very powerful. And which association you keep is uh, will indicate what your consciousness will be, what you'll be interested in. Now, what happens if I, if I'm in one circle of association? There's a very strong taste in in uh, exploiting matter for sense gratification, in various flavors. And then, somehow, by the grace of the Lord, I develop a taste for associating, hanging out with devotees who have very strong interest in Krishna then I'm torn between two groups because now the impact of association will be felt, you know? So how deeply is uh, my association, how deep are my roots in the association of non-devotees? You know, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was asked, what is the definition of a Vaishnava? Do you know what answer he gave? He said, there's only one definition. <laughs> It's a very interesting answer. It's not the answer that you might think. He said, this is Vaishnava Acharya. Vaishnava Achar. This is Vaishnava behavior. What is Vaishnava behavior? Asat Sang Tyag A Vaishnava Achar. What an odd definition. Asat Sang Tyag A Vaishnava Achar. Yehi hai Vaishnava Achar. What is that? This is the only definition of Vaishnava behavior. What? Giving up association of non-devotees. Asat, non-permanent association. Go for permanent. If you give up association of non-permanent platform, you will automatically take up the association of the permanent platform, which is called satsang. Which is why I say we're having satsang. Satsang means permanent association, which is eternal. Satsang doesn't mean that, you know, 20 people who hit uh, manjiras together and you get half a banana at the end and some zero. That is not satsang. Satsang means permanent, eternal association. Sat means permanent. Asat means impermanent. So, asatsang tyag ei vaishnavacha. You give up thoroughly. Naturally, people around, even close family, they'll be frustrated. But they have to accept you gradually. Of course, you'll keep them, you keep serving, you keep doing your duties. You know, like the gopis, they did their duties towards their family, but their mind was with Krishna. Right? So same thing. It doesn't mean we have to necessarily give it up. And gradually, if, if uh, we are fortunate, and uh, if they are fortunate, they will also gradually develop some taste for Krishna consciousness by our association. That happens all the time. We see it all the time. Devotees, families become Krishna conscious. Uh, so that is the hope. Even if the immediate family is not devotees, uh, one of two things happens. One of three things happen. Uh, one is that the devotees become, I mean, the family becomes devotees. The other is they become, they tolerate you and they may become somewhat favorable, but they won't become fully devotees. They tolerate, you know, and it's not like you're, you're hurting them. You still do your duty. They're taking care of them. And then uh, the extreme is that they can't handle it at all and they leave. A very painful situation that happens too. That happens too. And anyway, it is called a satsang uh, You know, there is a nice. If you are familiar with Narsim Mehta, Narsim Mehta bhajans, uh, you know, some of our Iskand devotees may not be familiar, but this is a very familiar among Gujaratis. Uh, this is a bhajan Narayana no Namal Chaleta Vare Tena Tajiye. Right. So in he says, Kulne tajiye, kutumbune tajiye, tajiye mane bapre, bhagini sutadhara ne tajiye, jem taje kancho pi sapre. So, kulne tajiye, kutumbune tajiye. You give up your kul, your entire family lineage for Narayan. Kutumba, your immediate family you give up. 
Tajiye mane bap. Even your father and mother you give up. Bhagini, the wife, Suta Dhara, your entire descendant lineage you give up. How? Jem taje kanchobi sapare. Just as a snake leaves the hole that was living in temporarily, just goes away, it never comes back again. Pretty extreme. <laughs> then he gives examples. Prathama pita prahlade tajiya. Nava tajiyu harinamare. That the first example, prahlad. He gave up his father, but he did not give up harinam. Prathama pita prahlade tajiya. Nava tajiyu harinamare. Bharata Shatrugne Taji Janeta Navatajiya Shri Ramare. That Bharata and Shatrug Shatrugna, they gave up their relationship with their mother Kaike, but did not give up their devotion to Ram. Huh, that's pretty heavy. So it happens all the time. I'm not saying that is the route we should take. I'm just saying these are certain possibilities because when a devotee recognizes the priority then the priority becomes so clear that other things, you see them for what they are. You see them in the proper perspective. The problem is because of our conditioning and our cultural conditioning and uh, social conditioning, that a lot of our priorities uh, get uh, topsy-turvy. And things that are supposed to be important, they're not given importance. And things that are... Uh, uh, not important, we put too much weight on them, you know. So uh, when we become devotees, we recognize things that are utterly inconsequential. Of course, they're still painful. Extracting ourselves from material conditioning is an intrinsically painful process. But the nectar that comes with Krishna consciousness and the sense of relief that comes with self-realization uh, frees us from a lot of that pain and uh, then we realize that no this is the best thing Krishna conscious the best thing no question of not being Krishna conscious and then the family members they reap the benefits of your persistence because whether they become devotees or not they will get the benefit of the uh, your spiritual works in the next life or in this life it's by osmosis you know just by being near you just by being related to you you know, it's like family discount. Oh, you're related to Kirtika Mataji. Yeah, yeah, come, come, come. No, no, but I didn't follow any principle. No, no, but Kirtika Mataji is a good devotee. You also come. Like that, you know. So that system is also there. A little bit nepotism works, you know, in Krishna consciousness. Not in this world. <laughs> anyway, that's a good question. Thank you. I think we still have time, Prabhuji. I think Shomya Prabhuji had raised his hand. Ah, yeah, let me see. I can see the top of the... Okay. Uh, Prabhuji, did you have a question? Show me. No, what I actually, I think it's mistakenly done. Eh? Okay, pole, pole, sir. Okay. We have three more minutes. Please ask another question or doubts or comments. At the same time, uh, Madan Gopal, uh, you know, there's a devotee all the way from South Africa who's joined uh, Shamananda and his wife Prema Leela. So, I really I'm very happy. Hari Bo. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Mataji. Yeah, Hare Bo. South Africa. The the, from Asia. South Africa, but I knew them from the manor. I think yeah. we also have a devotee from New Delhi. Rachna Mataji yeah. is also there. Shamananda Prabhu has agreed to come on our Zoom program as a speaker. Shamananda Prabhu, we are going to get on to you soon, soon. Haribol, Haribol, Haribol. And uh, Daksha just left. Oh, is she still there? There's so many I would like to really... Uh, Mukesh yeah. is still there. The Varshni family is still here. Haribol. Yes. They are all right. They are our people. Are <laughs> but a lot of the... Yeah. New people have come, so, you know, I'm really grateful, all those, like, uh, look, Deb is actually Artha Priya, he was our best pujari and the best cook in the Nairobi temple, he's still in Nairobi, still affiliated with us, not that he has left us, but he took up Grihastha Ashram, <laughs> he, he joins all our programs, Haribol, thank you. Haribol, Prabhu. Haribol. He's, he's always there, but nobody knows, but I know who he is. The best sweet maker in Nairobi, Sandesh, and yeah. chocolate. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Uh, Nairobi sweets are the best. Yeah. Anyway, there's a lot of my Kamore today. Uh, what the Gora Shakti joined? Uh, who else? I was thinking Christopher. So they're not coming on the video, but I'm really glad they have all uh, heard uh, Madan Gopal's session on surrender. They are surrendered souls struggling as uh, me also. Hi, and no questions. <laughs> Come so, on, don't let Madan Gopal go, although he has an engagement. Yeah, I have to leave very shortly. You know, we're opening does... our temple for the first time this week, so. Oh, wow. Very oh, cool. That's you? really good. You will send us a clip if you can. Yeah, you should uh, check it out. Uh, and we, we'll as check it out see, on the YouTube. Temple. We're building a new temple, but we are in the old temple right now. We've been old temple since 1981. And this is the new temple. This is our new temple. You can see behind me. Yes. Oh, yeah. Anyway, that's under construction. You can see the website over here. So you're opening for uh, for the public as normal? We're opening the old temple for the public because we were locked down for a couple of months, right? For virus. Oh, yeah, cool. but uh, in the manner they're still doing like a distance and online uh, booking for people to come to the temple. So you're that's, just allowing... No, no, that's how it is. This is the first time. Oh, okay. Time booking, you have to book. You have to book your time slot. Right. Four families allowed and you have to stand in the... I went yesterday and I put the tape markings on the temple floor. You can only stand in your square. And maximum mm. two Take darshan, you come out. Because uh, devotees need to take darshan, you know. And no feast, uh, no sitting down, kirtana, that stuff. Uh, they'll be packed. Adam, they, you take packages. Boxed prasadam, you just come, you take darshan, take box prasadam, keep your mask on, and you leave. So some oh. contact again with the temple. So maximum devotees will stay 10 minutes per family. They'll go, they'll take, and that's it. You go and come out. So oh, we're that's out good. Projects. You know, we're keeping it uh, as sanitized as possible uh, because there's still, you know, America is number one in everything, right? So we're number one in COVID yeah. deaths also. <laughs> uh, by far. So we have to be extra careful. Oh, okay, yeah, Govinda is asking a question. question. How can we surrender in spite of our entanglement in material activities? He's been speaking on it. That is, no, that is a very good question, of course. Uh, and uh, of course, the whole topic was from the point of view of our material entanglement. Uh, even, even those who are not materially entangled, may find it difficult to surrender to Krishna. What to speak of our material entanglement? Actually, you'll be surprised to know, you know the first line in Bhakti Thakur, Dainya Atma Nivedana. Dainya means humility. So, humility is a very important aspect of gaining the mercy of the Lord. I mean, it's natural. Even and we deal with people, you know, if there's some kids, the one kid is humble and sincere, we want to help that kid more than someone who is brash and arrogant and proud. It's just a natural thing. So the Lord also will be more responsive to us when we are humble. Now, think of this, that we are um, trying to surrender to Krishna, but we are stuck in material entanglements. Recognizing that we are stuck in material entanglements, uh, makes it easier for us to be humble. If I'm already free from material entanglements and very clean and clear, if I don't have, I don't have wife, I don't have children, I have a sannyasi, for example, and um, you know, I, I live under a tree, I have, that's a very nice thing. But it is also, that sort of situation may um, cause me to become proud. Let's see how I have no material entanglements. And that pride itself, can uh, come in my way of calling out feeling me to the Lord. Whereas a person who is under a burden of all kinds of material entanglements, including uh, various types of addictions, for example, but deep in the heart, he recognizes my Lord. So from the, under the buried, under 10 tons of rubble, concrete rubble of our material entanglements and our addictions and our uh, unfortunate mentalities, if for a moment, we put our hand out through that rubble 
and cry out to the Lord, my Lord, I need your help to come out from all these entanglements. Please, my Lord, I am nobody. And my attitude is so bad that I'm putting more entanglements on me. So only without, only you can help me. That evokes a special mercy from the Lord. So Krishna consciousness is all about leveraging our situation. What does that mean? That means we know humility is very powerful. Can I leverage my situation to enhance my humility? Yes. My Lord, look how fallen I am. Please, you save me. You are Patita Pawan. I am very Patita. I am very fallen. You save me. So then that humility gets stronger. So we are leveraging our conditioning, our entanglement to help us out. That is the name, absolute process of Krishna consciousness. That even things that look like they are negative are actually positive as long as our response to them uh, is progressive, progressive in spiritual terms. So if I find myself stuck somewhere, I can leverage that intense emotion to apply to Krishna. There is a point. So always leverage whatever situation, you always make good out of a bad bargain because nobody who is conditioned in this world has a good thing going for them. It's all bad only. You know, comfort, discomfort. Why do you think Queen Kunti prays, give me more calamities? She prays like that to Krishna. Right? She doesn't pray for more calamities because she enjoys pain. She enjoys showing off how much she's struggling. No. If you read the prayer properly, she says that every time I'm in calamity, I've noticed you also show up. So if it means, if my calamities means you are showing up, then let me have more calamities. Yes. It's, it is not calamities in and of themselves that she's praying for. She's noticing a correlation. Okay, every time there's some calamity, Krishna comes over here. So maybe it's the calamities that brings Krishna here. I don't want calamities, but if that means Krishna will come, then I want calamities, you see. So read the verse properly, you'll see her motivation is not calamity. Her motivation is Krishna. That is the verse. So similarly, if we find ourselves in some calamity, or well, material entanglement itself is a major calamity, then we recognize it for, its, for what it is, and then we shout out to the Lord to help us out, then the dainya aspect becomes powerful. Because we recognize our fallen situation. Now it doesn't mean that we remain fallen. Okay, we should start practicing Krishna consciousness, be as pure as possible, and then we move towards Krishna. Okay, so thank you very much for that nice question, Priya Govind Prabhu. Thank you all very much for um, this wonderful opportunity for me to speak a little bit on this verse on Bhagavad Gita. Thank you, Mansi Ganga Mataji, for always encouraging me and encouraging all the devotees in Eldoret to go deeper, you know, go deeper in the, in the Prabhupada's books. Prabhupada's books are very important. And we need to find devotees who have taste for Prabhupada's books and get some of that taste, you know. Then we'll, we'll enjoy Krishna consciousness within. That's the goal. Then, external Krishna consciousness will be that much more powerful for us. So, um, Hare Krishna, Shri Prabhupada Hare ki Krishna, Jai. 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 Thank you so much, Parth Prabhu ji. Thank you, Parth Prabhu. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you, Kirtika Mataji. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just before you go, Parth Prabhu ji would like to... Mataji, 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 Mataji will be do. Yes, Mataji, yes. Mataji there. Yeah, right. she will do, she right. will do. No, no, it's your service every time. Why I should do? Okay, no problem. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna. Again, I apologize to you because uh, yesterday you have a class, but uh, by somehow we extended to today. But it is a very wonderful class. And it is Sunday weekend. We really enjoy you. But uh, I think there is surrender. I, I hear you, but there is so many. It's a vast topic. And we need more classes in this one. Also, uh, there are many Vaishnava philosophers, Vaishnava devotees, they are written many books about the surrender. Please, you uh, prepare a slide, then you can give us, because this is the basic uh, principle of the devotee to develop in devotional service. Thank you very much, Prabhuji, for your enlightenment today's class on behalf of all the devotees, especially in the Eldoret group. We pray for your. Uh, Bright, 
knowledge and give your knowledge um, whenever we are required. <laughs> we are required every day, but it is a time and circumstance. So we pray. Uh, we are supposed to glorification His grace, um, Prabhuji, and for glorification, we are chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Please join all together. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Padma also joined. Wow. Praise Madan Gopar Prabhu Ki. Yay. Thank you to everyone who stayed till the end. Thank you. 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 Thank